Welcome back to a new video about controller design. This is our example number five. In this example, we will discuss the lag controller design using the frequency response method. Of course, we will work out the calculation step by step and also verify our calculation using MATLAB simulations. So let's look at our example. We have the following problem. The following feedback system is given. We have the lag controller here in cascade with a plan and the plan transfer function G is shown here as a third order system and it has also a zero at minus five. We would like a design lag controller such that the lag control system yields three times less position error compared to the P control system while having a maximum overshoot of 20%. So the final design must be a lag control system and it must have three times less position error compared to the P control system. So we need to first do the P control system, that taking as reference, and then make the lag control system having three times less position error and keeping the overshoot maximum of 20%. So, and the lag control transfer function is shown here. So it has the zero and a pole, and also the, its gain here, K lag. So we need to determine these three parameters also. So let's look at the solutions. We first start with the calculation of damping ratio giving from the overshoot. That's where we start for the frequency response analysis. The zeta, which is shown here in this formula, can be calculated using the MP as a scalar value, which is then 20% will be then 0.2. So when you substitute that in the formula, you get 0.456 as a value for the damping ratio. Now we calculate now the required phase margin in the Final design, that can be done using this formula. You see the zeta again in this formula. And if I now substitute the value just determined here for the damping ratio, you'll get 48 degrees. Okay, that is now, in theory, what we require as the phase margin in order to get maximum to 20%. But we know from the land control that it will contribute some negative phase. It is maybe small, maybe 3 or 4%, 4 degrees, I mean, as negative but it will produce definitely a negative phase so to compensate this negative phase we can add some extra phase or phase margin to the actual required phase margin. so we can say let's add 5 or 10 degrees extra to the actual calculated value here so we can say let's then add for example 10 degrees on top of this 48 then we'll get 58 degrees so that the lag controlled system will definitely have at least 48 degrees if you don't take this extra phase margin into account, you can have a phase margin at the end, maybe 44 degrees, depending on how much negative phase the lag controller will contribute. So this phase safety margin is not actually a luxury. It's really mandatory to do that. So we required now for the phase margin for the lag control system, 45 plus 10, which is then 50. For 48, I mean, plus 10 will be then 58. We start with a P control system, as said, that's our reference. So our transfer function for the controller is just the gain. Now let's do the loop transfer function. I call this L1. Now the controller is just K, so K1 here as the gain number uh, value, times the plant will be then this transfer function. Now we will use this in the J omega domain, and you have this expression. Now we know in order to calculate the phase margin, the omega PM1 for this specific P control system, we can calculate first the argument at that omega PM using the phase margin we want, which is then 58 degrees. Now we calculate the argument or have an expression for the argument of, of this expression of the loop transfer function, which is then L1. Now that is the arc tangent of the numerator minus the arc tangents part of the denominator is all shown here. So the minus signs are because of that denominator. That must be equal to minus 180 degrees plus the phase margin we require, taking into account also the extra phase margin, which is 58. That must add up to minus 122. Now this is an equation you can solve because it has only one unknown, but it is of course quite difficult to do it by hand, so we just use the solver we get here omega p1 is 10.67 radians per second okay let's take this together and also our loop transfer function again for future analysis we calculate now the gain required for this gain margin frequency 
For that we set the loop transfer function magnitude at that required phase margin frequency to 1. So this amplitude or the magnitude of this one must be 1. Now, when you do that here in this transfer function, you take the length of the numerator divided by the length of the denominator. It's all shown here actually with the square of the each part for the real and imaginary parts. You see that here. Now, when you get it to 1, you can calculate it again using solver. That's not really that difficult. You get 165 as the gain for the proportional control. Then we have the following. The loop transfer function will be now L1 is equal to K1 times the G, which is our transfer function will be this. So we have now the K1 and also the plant transfer function together. Now the position error for this specific P control system. We start with the position error constant, which is KP. In this specific case, we call this KP1 to refer to the P control system. Now we calculate KP1 using the limit of that L1 as approaching to zero. That is only possible where we have a unity gain feedback, which is the case, so we can use this formula directly. Now we see that L1 is from here. Now we can again use this limit formula. And when you substitute now here, or approach for S0, you get this expression. And when you do the calculation here, you get 6.875. Now the position error specifically for unit step input is then calculated using this KP1 value, which is this formula. And for unit step, you calculate this, uh, you use this formula to calculate it. But if this input is not unit step, but for example, a step with a value of 6 as an amplitude, you can just multiply this formula by 6. So you get EP1 is equal to 1 over this 1 plus the position error constant. Now, when you substitute the value in here, you get this 0.127. This is the error, and that must be reduced at least by a factor of 3 in the final lag controlled system. So let's then take that together. This is all the information we had for our P controlled system analysis. Now we move on to the lag control system and then use this information to get to the required three times less position error while keeping the overshoot 20%. Okay, the position error must be reduced by this, uh, by three times. It can be reduced if you, of course, also increase the K1 value. Because we saw in the formula of the EP1 with the error, if you increase the K1, you will also increase the KP1, but also it will then reduce the position error. But when you do that, that will also increase the overshoot. So you can try to decrease your position error, but it will increase your overshoot. This is just a note that it is not possible just by making the gain larger. You can of course make one specification fine, but other specification will then larger and that will be then not to satisfy this problem. So the specification for overshoot and the position error are conflicting in the design when you just focus on the P control system in this specific problem. So we set now the lag control gain. So the conclusion actually is we cannot go on with the p control system that's why we need the lag control system so we said the lag controlled gain k lag equal to k1 we have just calculated that can be done when you apply some approximations in your analysis so the k lag is equal to k1 which is then 165 so one of the unknowns are now done here so we only need the z lag and the p lag so loop transfer function now will be then l2 which is then the new loop transfer function for the lag control system that's shown here, and now we have 165 and this ratio, and then again our plant. Now, the required position error for lag control system must be three times larger, as said here, so that is then this value. So this is the error I need at the end, in the final design. Okay. Now again, the position error constant, Kp, now two for the lag control system, again using the same formula, but then getting from the error to the kp2 so you work out actually the formula for the ep as we did in the p control system and you work it out you get the kp2 that must be 22.62 as the value so we can get a little bit larger if you want a little bit safety so this kp2 is required okay now when you go to now the position error constant kp2 from the lag control system as the limit formula again using this l2 shown here, we can say it is Z lag over P lag times the 6.875. 
because this was the complete thing here was together with this 165 was 6.875 and this ratio here will be z lag over p lag when you do s approaching zero now we get this and this must be equal to 22.62 that's just calculated and this is actually a ratio so we see the ratio of the lag zero over lag pole must be 22.62 over 6.875 which is almost 3.3 .3, so 3.29 here so ratio of the lag controller zero to the ratio the, the, the lag control pole must be at least 3.3 .3, to reduce the position error by a factor of three at least that means we have another freedom here so it is just a ratio you can take any ratio you want uh, and the, the values you want in order to take, take that uh, value but now again that there is some uh, note here if you, for example make this three and make this 3.3 .3, i mean and make this one that is possible then you get 3.3 .3, but then the phase contribution can be much more negative than actually anticipated so you need to take them close together and still have the ratio 3.29 so let's do that. Next one, we have this Z lag over P lag ratio, and we K lag is this one, and we keep this phase margin frequency also for the lag control system. So we can set the higher break frequency, which is the lag zero, about one decade below the phase margin frequency. That is just a rule of thumb. So it means the following: the Z lag will be then omega P one, which is this 10.67. You divide by 10, which is one decade below, and you get now one point. 067 as our z lag position now once we know that we can calculate now the p lag with this formula because we know that it must be then 2.29 3.29 so literally then p lag will be then 0 0.2 so the lag control transfer function will be then given by this expression so we have now the 165 the zero and the pole for the lag so now the situation is completed, so we have now everything. And our loop transfer function now is completed with the lag controller. It's given by this expression. You see that completely. Okay. Moving on and taking now the simulation results. We start with the frequency response of the body plot and we start with the loop transfer function of the P control system. So we have this loop transfer function. We said already we have the controller as 165. This is our plan. Let's see what we have. We see here the phase margin here of 58 degrees as we had calculated or actually required because we had added one, the 10 degrees phase uh, safety margin and this 10.7 was the uh, omega pm which is the phase margin frequency we calculated actually 10.67 is also very really close to what we have calculated so this is all checked okay let's move on the simulation results now for the transfer response using the unit step now looking at this p control system Close to transfer, close to system, of course, in this case. So you can see the step response, unit step response. You see the overshoot is 17.5, so lower than 20%. That's fine. It's also the final value, which is 0 0.873. This is what we wanted because this is the transfer function of the close loop system. This T1 over this. T1 is equal to the K1 times the plant over 1 plus the K1 over plant. This is just using Mason's gain rule. And this is the these are the values, the performance of this uh, system using the P-controller. You see the overage is as said small than 20% and also the steady state error is 0 0.127 as we have calculated because the final value is this. You put in one unit step input, that means one minus the final value is the error. So this is fine and this is fine as we had calculated. Now move on to the lag controller, so the loop transfer function for the lag. This is the lag control transfer function we have determined. Looking at the complete loop transfer function is this one, L2. You see also the label here. Now looking at the phase margin frequency, which is the phase margin I mean, which is 53.9, almost 54 degrees. As said, we wanted to have 48 degrees initially and we added 10 degrees extra. And this 10 degrees extra was definitely required here because if we didn't do that, we might get to maybe 44 degrees. So this is now 54 degrees, so it is a little bit smaller than 58 degrees we have actually uh, have for the peak control system. So that phase to margin was really required. Maybe not 10 degrees, maybe 6 or 5 degrees was also fine. Well, you don't know for sure, of course, bef beforehand. So this is perfectly fine. And again, the phase is, uh, 
phase marginal frequency here is again 10.7 radians per second so that's exactly the same okay now looking at the unit step response now trans response for this lag control system the close-up system t2 that t2 is shown here so this is the g lag times the plant over one plus the g lag times the plant again mason's gain rule you see the overshoot which is 14 percent so definitely larger than 20 percent also definitely larger than the p control system you see the final value which is 0 0.958 and together we have this information so over is fine perfectly and you get a final value of 0 0.958 and when you do now one minus the final value we get 0 0.043 and the overshoot is perfectly fine and this is also fine because this is definitely three times smaller than the peak controlled steady state error or the position error so that is indeed as we have calculated so let's also compare results that will be helpful in a body plot the orange line is for the uh, lag controller so using the lag controller and the blue line is for the system with the peak controller a gain of 165. you see here the table and with the result, phase margin is 58 for the P control system and 54 approximately for the lag control system. You see the phase margin frequencies are exact same and the gain margin frequency and the gain margin itself is all infinite. So this is the important thing. And you can see also the values here. You see that they are exact same frequency, but it is a little bit smaller for the lag control system compared to the uh, P control system. But lag control system will give us three times less error in the position that's the reason for using this lag controller okay also looking at the transfer response unit step response to compare that this is again the orange line is for the lag control system the blue line is for the p control system you see also the final value is close to the one you see that because that's 0 0.958 this is 0 0.873 it's also the overshoot here it's a little bit smaller for the lag control system than the p control system and these are the summation of the, the summary of the results for the p control system and the lag control system you see the lag control system is uh, slower you can see that in the settling time and the peak time and also the rise time but it has less overshoot and it also has a less definitely three times smaller this is the overshoot and this has three times smaller position error that's also what we wanted so in total we have what we required for this design example because if you do the 0.127 over 0.043 you get more than three reduction which is what we wanted all right guys this is our example about the lag controller design using the frequency response method we have compared that to the peak control system and then improved the performance and the position error using the lag controller and calculated the required parameters for our lag controller if you have any questions about this example please let me know i will try to answer them as soon as possible in the next video we will continue with the lead and other specific controller types to illustrate the concept in great detail see you next time in another video take care